Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Take 5 with Pelican Corp. I'm Sam Hanziak, and as always, I'm joined by my colleague, Jason Manning. Uh, in today's episode, we want to talk about kind of a uh, landmark report that the CGA recently put out called the Next Practices Report that explores uh, the challenges central to our industry, um, some of the things that we're facing as a whole, and uh, more specifically, uh, the areas for investment or improvement that we can make as stakeholders to help overcome those challenges and make this process more sustainable. Uh, so this will be kind of a quick episode and it will set us up for another discussion uh, where we're going to get a little bit more in depth on the problem of volume and variability, which will come shortly after this. Uh, but Jason, I'll have you share the first slide here that will help us talk to this a bit. There you go. All right. So the headline from this report, uh, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase from what was inside the next practices report, uh, this statement that the damage prevention industry finds itself at an inflection point, stresses on the system have caused inefficiencies resulting in a process that is not protecting critical underground infrastructure as well as it could or should. So we now have decades of experience within this damage prevention process. And from that experience, the CGA is taking a moment to kind of take a step back and look at how well this process is working and uh, specifically whether or not it's going to continue to work in the future as obviously uh, different stressors uh, come onto the process or change the process and uh, ways that we can uh, improve it going forward. So I just want to take a look at kind of three of the areas that CGA called out specifically as being challenges and, uh, and forcing us to take a look at improving this. Uh, the first one that is simply that facilities are not marked accurately or on time. Uh, this on time problem is related to something that, again, we will talk about in another episode, but this problem of volume and variability, which is essentially as a facility operator, you're receiving a lot more locate requests per year. That's putting pressure downstream on downstream on the system and it's causing late tickets, which is ultimately causing damages. Uh, the second thing is excavator errors in the field, and this is uh, related to kind of a whole number of different problems, but one of them is this uh, communication gap that exists within our current system. This is also something that, uh, Jason, I know you've talked about extensively, um, but, but essentially this idea that you know, an excavator will submit a locate request and then go several days uh, without really hearing anything from the facility operator or the, or the one call center. Uh, and in that time, they choose uh, a more uh, a decent amount of times to, to dig before the locate request uh, wait period. And that's causing also damages and injuries, uh, which kind of ties into that third finding, which is just simply the ineffective and inconsistent use of 811. Uh, this is related to uh, probably more broadly education, awareness, uh, people knowing the rules and regulations of, uh, of their state and their uh, local one call center. Um, so those are kind of the challenges the Next Practices report pulled out and wanted to focus in on. And Jason, I'm going to have you uh, just kind of talk to kind of these four areas that CGA identified as potentially uh, areas for investment uh, where we can help improve this process. Yeah, thanks, Sam. And uh, I think it's it's important to note that, you know, while the CGA did, I think, a great job of sort of highlighting these areas and, and really directing the industry to look at it and go, let's let's find some solutions. They've put forth some areas here. This is I, I don't think even they would claim that this is uh, sort of complete and, uh, you know, right. the, the, the sort of the end of the, the solution. Uh, these are really some points that we can start with there, to some extent, some low hanging fruit. Um, and a lot of them are already being used, and uh, maybe that that last point about the you know ineffective and inconsistent use has uh, has something to do with some of these points here as well, where uh, things like the first point, which is electronic white lining, uh, like many things, there's versions of it. Um, you can you can do it, and if it's not sort of handed along, if you can collect the information, if it's not handed along. Um, in something that you'll probably hear me talk about more about sort of this high fidelity uh, concept of of um, passing along information that's kind of untouched and in its purest form, um, then it loses some effectiveness. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll run through these. And again, you'll kind of hear us, I think, in, in future and maybe even past episodes, come back to some of these uh, these same themes. Um, we have electronic white lining, and I think electronic white lining is something that's it's well known by now. 
And it's really the idea of a, an electronic version of exactly what people would do on site. They would they would get you know a locator to the site, but they would actually put white paint on the ground to show exactly where they're digging. Right. Um, it's it's simply the electronic version of that. It's capturing the precise dig site uh, electronically and hopefully passing that along uh, to the to the locator in an in a, a sort of an untouched form. And that's something that, like I said, I think is maybe not always handled perfectly, but that's a, a big part of it. Now, the second point we see here is the GIS mapping of all buried infrastructure. And that seems like a, well, of course, right? But right. <laughs> uh, these these points sort of link together in that, uh, you know, passing along, for example, the electronic white lining in a form that you can't really use electronically is not helpful. So if you collect it electronically and then you pass it along as, uh, you know, a fax, um, it's really not doing a lot. It's probably better than nothing, but it's not really doing a lot. If it's passed along electronically and with a, a good deal of precision, then step number two starts to make a lot more sense because if the utilities all have precise um, data that they've been gathering in their GIS, then all of a sudden they can start to do things with that. So when you go, well, here's the exact dig site that's going to happen, not a, an approximation uh, you know, that's potentially hundreds of feet away. We're talking about a precise spatial object that gets passed along. You can put that into your precise spatial database and make some decisions. Um, and that can be anything from simply clearing tickets because you're not there. You know, one calls jobs is is they're erring on the side of safety. They're going right. to send it to you if you're close by. And a lot of them use buffering and all sorts of things, which means you could actually get a dig site polygon that's drawn that's hundreds of feet away from where your actual facilities are. Um, you know, clearing those, sending back information uh, regarding those tickets, using that uh, that information can really reduce downstream. So that, that data collection becomes all important. Uh, the third one is uh, utilizing software to account for variability and locate demand and the likelihood of jam damages. Th this is utilizing software, and we say this, obviously we work for a software company, right? Um, but this is a, a, a real catch-all. Um, you know, they're, they're not really saying what, and in fact, uh, I'm, I'm going to sort of invite people right now, if you're watching, if you've got uh, a, a use for technology or software here uh, that you think is that you're using or you think is sort of would would correct this problem, uh, you know, comment and, and let us know what you think. The first things that come to mind for me are things like, uh, you know, they could do automated uh, automated screening. Um, there's uh, they can use. Um, they can use the information on the ticket and they can use technology to work smarter, not harder. I've said that before, too, uh, mm -hmm. but really uh, allowing for risk assessment and sending the right tickets to the right locator, make sure the qualifications match, uh, just avoid rework. And uh, I actually think that um, uh, that doing that and incorporating some some appropriate communication, uh, you know, early on and giving good information actually would prevent a lot of the, the relocates and the refreshing of requests that we see really clog up the system. Uh, if everyone's got that information and the, the software is there to optimize it, I think that'll, that'll help a lot. Um, and the fourth one is uh, contractually requiring adherence to the CGA best practices and uh, using stronger enforcement mechanisms, which I think sort of, I think that sort of speaks to itself. Uh, obviously, the CGA is going to want people to adhere to the best practices, and you know, they they've arrived at them by consensus. So I think that's that is a a, a good uh, a good point. But that sort of covers those uh, those four areas. Yeah, I think that's a really good summary, Jason. And kind of to just go off a little bit of uh, on what you had previously said here. Obviously, I think these are a really good uh, launching uh, platform, really good place to start. Uh, that the CGA put up basically identifying this problem and then having these four areas uh, for investment improvement. But obviously, this isn't kind of the end all be all. Um, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Um, there's a lot of ways to. Uh 
help solve these problems. So I think as an industry, we all recognize that, yeah, we we have a problem and we have a problem with this process and, and it's unlikely to be sustainable in the future. Um, we as a software company at Pelican Corp, we have a lot of solutions that we f- uh, feel fit strongly in, uh, in uh, certainly section three. Uh, to help pro- solve these problems, but um, we'd, we'd love to hear from the broader community as to what you see as the areas of most impact where um, somebody like us, a technology partner, could come in and assist and help, uh, or uh, maybe just outside of that area as well, somebody like uh, locators and excavators, uh, where they can find efficiencies within their own organizations. So certainly let us know. Um, thanks again for uh, sitting in another conversation here. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please subscribe to our channel for more of this information. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. All right. Goodbye.